Good morning, Western Washington, and happy Saturday. I'm Matthew Fab with Western Washington Weather, and we've got a lot to talk about today, including a recap of last night's windstorm, and then a look at the major atmospheric river and flooding event that is coming to the Pacific Northwest as we go into next week. So starting here with the satellite imagery, we see got some scattered clouds across the region today, some showers continuing the mountains, and we have our next system offshore here that'll be moving in as we go through tonight into tomorrow. Starting with the radar as well, you can see some showers across the region, likely kind of keeping the metro area a little bit rain shadowed today. But you can see some of those showers in the mountains and parts of the coast and southwest Washington as well. We may get some showers into the lowlands, but not very much in terms of rain today. Now taking a look at the windstorm yesterday, I filtered the wind gusts on here to only show us maximum gusts over 45 or sorry, over 35 miles per hour. And what I want to point out is that this definitely overperformed. You had 54 miles an hour in Shelton, 52 at the port of Tacoma, 50 in northeast Tacoma, um, and 49 there at SeaTac Airport, 50 in Newcastle, 46 at Boeing Field, 48 near Alki in West Seattle, 44 up at West Point at Discovery Park, even up to 49 in North Bend. Our peak gust, I don't think it's going to show up on here, but it was, there it is actually, 96 miles per hour on one of the ridges above Chinook Pass there out near Highway 410. And then if we go up to the north a little bit, we did have some gusty winds with the westerly surge down the Strait of Juan de Fuca. 48 miles per hour in NAS Whidbey, and Dungeness Spit actually hit 56 miles per hour, but that was after midnight, and then 48 miles an hour over in Port Angeles, which doesn't usually get super windy, so that was interesting to see as well. And even right now, as I'm making this video about a 9.30 in the morning here in Federal Way, there are still some gusts coming through the area. As we go here and look at the overall pattern, we have this mix between that we have the trough to our north the ridge to our south and that's where that atmospheric river is going to set up as we go we have a week one that moves through saturday or sunday there but then look as we go into monday you can tell these uh, really tight um, lines of height there in this area is where that atmospheric river sets up. It kind of rides along the north side of that ridge and just hangs out there all the way through Thursday into Friday, and that brings just a huge amount of rain to the northwest. It starts to push off to the north as we go into Thursday night as that ridge pushes north as well. So taking a look at the precipitation type map here, you can see some heavy snow potentially today for parts of the North Cascades. Those showers continue as we go through the afternoon and evening, maybe increasing in coverage just a little bit and bringing a little bit more mountain snow. And then as we go into Sunday morning, you can see we get this round of rain moving through the area from a week and very quick atmospheric river that pushes through heavy rain in the lowlands at times and then some mountain snow as well. But that snow level is a little bit um, undetermined at this point. Um, and then you can see some of that snow continues as we go into Sunday night. And then we have a brief break early Monday morning. But by 7 a.m. Monday, you can see that heavy rain from the atmospheric river slamming into western Washington. Very heavy rain throughout the day. That snow level rises above the passes. You can see then that rain as we go into Tuesday, the atmospheric river pushes south into Oregon, weakens a little bit, and then pushes back up into western Washington as we go into Wednesday morning and continues bringing rain, especially from areas um, south of the northwest interior there. Snow level really high as we go through Wednesday. It continues bringing rain over Oregon and then, of course, in Washington as well. And then you can see some potential mountain snow, but again, that snow level is going to be a bit on the higher side. And then it continues raining all the way through Thursday before we likely start to see it dissipate there as we go into Thursday night. And then we may still have more rain coming as we go toward the weekend. Um, so I wanted to show this kind of, this is the precipitable water. This is the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. You can see this weak system that moves through tomorrow, bringing us a decent round of rain, but not all that much. But then as we go into Sunday night, into Monday morning, you see this just textbook atmospheric river. And I've had some comments, you know, we hear on social media and stuff like, why don't you just call it a rainstorm and stuff like that? Well, an atmospheric river, by definition, is a long and narrow, continuous band of moisture in the atmosphere, and that's exactly what this is. And we call it that because it is something that produces impacts, and we want people to know that there are going to be impacts. So sometimes you have to use a bigger term than just saying, oh, there's going to be a big rainstorms. You want to say there's an atmospheric river coming that's going to produce some flooding across the region, potentially a pretty widespread flooding event. So you can see Monday, the atmospheric river moves through, pushes south into Oregon on Tuesday, and then pushes back north into western Washington on uh, Wednesday there continues moving through Washington and Oregon on Thursday before you can see it kind of starts to diminish there as we go into Thursday night, but it still exists. It's just being pushed north up into British Columbia by that point. And then I wanted to point this out as well. This is the NAM model. We're looking at high-resolution wind gust here. And you can see 35 miles per hour or so through the day today, maybe up toward 40 miles per hour for the Strait of Juan de Fuca there. And then as we go into Sunday, we do get another round of some wind moving through the area. 
maybe some more gusts up toward 40 miles an hour, so 35 or 40 miles per hour there for um, parts of the South Sound and the southern coast as we go through Sunday. But then take a look at Monday as that atmospheric river starts to move in. We are going to get some gusty winds across the area again, which is not great given that the soils will be saturated. You can see gusts on the coast likely reaching 45 to 55 miles per hour there on Monday. And then the lowlands here likely reaching 45 to 50 miles per hour. You can see 47 in Seattle and Tacoma and Everett, 48 in Bremerton, 46 in Shelton, 50 miles per hour there up near the San Juans. And then take a look at some of these winds over the ridges of the Cascades up towards 60 to 70 miles per hour. And then look over at Spokane, 55 mile per hour winds from Spokane down toward Moses Lake and and uh, Ritzville and stuff like that. So it could be a pretty windy day across the area on Monday in addition to the heavy rain that's falling. So that can be kind of hazardous at times. So just heads up for that. We'll keep watching that over the next couple days as well. Now taking a look at those rain totals. This is the European model looking at total rain through Monday at midnight there. You can see about an inch for inch to an inch and a quarter for some of the lowlands of Whatcom and Skagit County. You can see that rain shadow that stretches from basically Seattle all the way up through uh, Nanaimo, British Columbia. And that's because the rain is coming in from the west and the Olympic Mountains and the mountains on Vancouver Island kind of shelter the areas immediately downwind. That's why you have a big increase in the rain totals from Seattle down toward Tacoma and Olympia because the Olympic Mountains don't shelter Tacoma and Olympia as much. So you're looking at about a half inch in Seattle through the weekend and then three quarters of an inch or so from Seattle southward down toward Olympia and Portland and about an inch on the coast. However, as we go into the next few days, you can see that atmospheric river hits as we go into Monday, and those totals just skyrocket through the next few days. Then it pushes south over Oregon on Tuesday, but then as we go into Wednesday, those totals increase yet again as it moves back up toward western Washington. And this is just through Thursday at 10 p.m., and you can see you're looking at rain totals across the area of about 2 to 4 inches in the lowlands, and then from Tacoma southward, those totals are more like four to six inches of rain. The coast likely getting three to six inches, maybe a little bit more for parts of the Oregon coast, up towards seven to eight inches. And then take a look at the Cascades around Mount Baker and the northern Cascades there. You're looking at about six to eight inches of rain. But from Snohomish County southward down toward Lewis County, you're looking at staggering amounts of eight to 12 inches of rain in just about a five-day period. And take a look at the southern Cascades there, including some parts of the Columbia River Gorge potentially getting up toward 15 inches of rain. We kind of still have some details to iron out here to see, like, um, how this area, these heavier areas of rain kind of are distributed, where they set up. Um, so we have to watch that closely. But overall, you can see the threat of flooding is very high when you get amounts like this in the Cascades. And then taking a look at the National Blend of Models, a higher resolution forecast you can see showing a little bit less rain through the weekend here with some of these showers moving through. But if we play this out all the way through into the end of this week, I'll put it all the way through Friday night, and you can see you're looking at about 2 to 3 inches from Vancouver, B.C. down towards Seattle. From Seattle southward, you're looking at 3.5 to 6.5 inches all the way down through the Willamette Valley. Coast looking at 4 to 7 inches of rain, and then you can see all the Cascades and the Olympics likely getting 8 to 12 inches of rain, maybe some areas getting a little bit more. But when you see stuff like this in the, just this short amount of time, you know that flooding is going to happen. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. Wanted to point out the snow as well. This is through Monday at midnight. And you can see we maybe get some of these showers that are moving through the North Cascades to bring up to a foot of snow at Stevens Pass, potentially, and maybe around three inches or so at Snoqualmie Pass, maybe eight to ten inches at White Pass. Um, but then as we go through the rest of the week, we don't get very much more snow. You can see as we play this out through Monday, you can see those snow totals don't really increase because the snow level is pretty high. We may get a few inches of snow at times for Stevens Pass. Snoqualmie Pass will have a hard time getting much. But then as we go all the way through Thursday, you can see the entire time with the atmospheric river, we're not getting getting very much snow, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, the totals don't really increase that much during the atmospheric river, so we do have to watch this closely. Sometimes forecast model resolution plays a part in seeing these snow totals, but overall looking like we're going to get some snow this weekend, and then that snow will likely melt with the snow level skyrocketing as we go into next week with the atmospheric river. And we can see that in the temperatures. You can see today highs in the upper 40s to low 50s across western Washington. But as we go into Sunday, those highs increase to the mid-50s for areas south of Everett. And then as we go into Monday, you can see the atmospheric river hits. The entire region has highs in the mid-50s. And even the mountains getting highs up into the low 40s at some of the passes. 
that continues as we go into Tuesday. With the atmospheric river pushing south a little bit, we drop to the low 50s, but the mountains likely stay above freezing at the passes and with that snow level around five to 6,000 feet. But then as we go into Wednesday, the atmospheric river moves back in, highs in the mountains increase back up to the 40s, into the mid-50s again in the lowlands. Same thing on Thursday, their highs up in the mid-50s for most of the region, including up in the mountains, and that is what will bring potential flooding. This is the University of California, San Diego, um, taking a look at the atmospheric river category system that they've created, and the consensus is a category four atmospheric river, which is when you're not really looking at something that's beneficial, but more on the dangerous side, and you can see the American model and the European model both showing that for Washington and Oregon. And then this is what we really want to pay attention to, the river flooding graphic here. I'm not going to go too much into detail on this. I will be doing a live stream later this weekend when we can talk about this in depth. But basically, every river that drains off the Cascades is going to flood in some capacity from the Skagit River all the way down through the Stillaguamish, the Snoqualmie River system. The um, You got the Cedar River and the White River, the Puyallup and Carbon River system, the Nisqually, and then the Cowlitz, and then, of course, the Chehalis River system as well, which includes some rivers that come off the Cascades and the Willapa Hills, and then of course the Skokomish River, which always floods there by Hood Canal, and even into eastern Washington, you may be having some flooding on the Yakima River all the way down as far as the Tri Cities. So Definitely a widespread flooding event right now. It looks like the highest flooding amounts will be on the Snoqualmie River, but that could change as we go through the next few days and get these forecasts updated as these river forecasts intake data from the forecast models. So we just have to kind of wait and see how this plays out, but we'll be talking about the flooding much more in the coming days. And then looking at the ensemble forecast here, you can see kind of the two rounds of rain that show up on the European model for Seattle. Here you have the first round Monday into Tuesday, and then that second round um, Wednesday into Thursday. A little bit less confidence in that round, but it could... If both rounds are big, we could get higher totals. But then when you look at Portland, you can see a little bit better position to get some bigger rain that you kind of don't get as much of a break there in Portland and southwest Washington, which brings some higher totals down there. So we have to watch closely to kind of see how this plays out as well. And then this is Snoqualmie Pass looking at temperatures. You can see when that atmospheric river hits, you get above freezing and you stay above freezing for quite a while all the way into Friday. And that's going to allow that snow level to get pretty high in some of the, of the mountains there. And then Finally, the Weather Prediction Center excessive rainfall outlook. This is showing a potential of flooding and flash flooding across um, the, a given area. So you can see here, Washington, Oregon highlighted this is Monday's outlook. Then we go into Tuesday's outlook and Wednesday's outlook, and you can see the trend that there is a elevated risk here for excessive rainfall going into the next week here with all this rain coming up. So yeah, that's a lot to digest and there's a lot to talk about. So stay tuned for more over the next few days. You can follow me on my Western Washington Weather Facebook group and then follow me on Twitter and Blue Sky as well. And of course, be sure to subscribe here on Western Washington Weather YouTube and share these videos as well. So thank you all very much for watching. Stay tuned for more over the next few days on social media and here on the channel. And I will talk to you all later.